Good evening, and welcome to episode 5 of Mortar and Pestle Productions Radio Classics. Tonight, we bring you the second installment of our three-part serial presentation of William Shakespeare's Macbeth. Tonight's cast features Kate Corsi, Glenda Bell, and Judith Herman as the Witches, Kyle Frank as Macbeth, Eli Thompson as Banquo, Sean Kalaki as Malcolm and the First Murderer, Riley Ann as Lady Macbeth, Oral Speakwell as Macduff, Scott Fairbairn as Lennox and the Second Murderer, Stephen Vanny as Ross and the Third Murderer, Walid Hassanze as Angus and Fleance, and Megan Graham as Hecate and the Apparitions. Without further ado, we proudly present Part 2 of Mortar and Pestle's production of Macbeth. Here comes the good Macduff. How goes the world, sir, now? Why? See you not. Is known who did this more than bloody deed? Those that Macbeth hath slain. Alas, the day! What good could they pretend? They were sovereign. Malcolm and Donalbain, the king's two sons, are stolen away and fled, which puts upon them suspicion of the deed. Against nature still, thriftless ambition that wilt raven up thine own life's means. Tis most like the sovereignty will fall upon Macbeth. He's already named and gone to scone to be invested. Where is Duncan's body? Carried to Colmkill, the sacred storehouse of his predecessors and guardian of their bones. Will you to scone? No, no, cousin. I'll to fife. Well, I will, sister. May you see things well done there. Adieu, lest our old robes sit easier than our new. Farewell. Thou hast it now, King, Cador, Glamis, all as the weird women promised, and I fear thou playest most foully for it. Yet it was said that myself should be the root and father of many kings. There come truth from them as upon thee, Macbeth. Their speeches shine. Why, by the verities on thee made good, may they not be my oracles as well? But hush, no more. Ha-ha! Here's our chief guest. If he had been forgotten, it had been as a gap in our great feast, an all-thing unbecoming. Tonight we hold a solemn supper, sir, and I'll request your presence. Let your highness command upon me, to the which my duties are with most indissoluble tie forever knit. Ride you this afternoon? Mm, aye, my good lord. We should have else desired your good advice, which still hath been both grave and prosperous in this day's council. But we'll take tomorrow. Is far your ride? As far, my lord, as will fill up the time twixt this and the supper. Go now, my horse, the better. I must become a borrower of the night for the dark hour or twain. Fail not our feast. My lord, I will not. We hear our bloody cousins are bestowed in England and in Ireland, not confessing their cruel parricide, filling their hearers with strange invention. But of that, tomorrow, hie you to your horse, adieu, till you return at night. Goes Fleance with you? Aye, my good lord. Our time does call upon us. I wish your horses swift and sure of foot, and so I do commend you to their backs. Farewell. Let every man be master of his time till seven at night to make society the sweeter welcome. We will keep ourselves till supper time alone. While then, God be with you. To be thus is nothing, but to be safely thus... Our fears in Banquo stick deep, and in his royalty of nature reigns that which would be feared. Tis much he dares, and to that dauntless temper of his mind he hath a wisdom that doth guide his valor to act in safety. There is none but he whose being I do fear. He chid the sisters when at first they put the name of king upon me, and bade them to speak to him. Then, prophet-like, they hailed him father to a line of kings. Upon my head they placed a fruitless crown, and put a barren scepter in my gripe. 
If it be so, for Banquo's issues have I filed my mind, for them the gracious Duncan have I murdered, to make them kings, the seeds of Banquo kings. Who's there? Was it not yesterday we spoke together? It was, so please, your highness. Now have you considered of my speeches? Know that it was he in the times past which held you so under fortune, and all things else that might to half a soul and to a notion craze say, thus did Banquo. You made it known to us. I did so, and went further, which is now our point of second meeting. Do you find your patience so predominant in your nature that you can let this go? We are men, my liege. Aye. Now, if you have a station in the file, not in the worst rank of manhood, say it. I will put that business in your bosoms, whose execution takes your enemy off, grapples you to the heart and love of us, who wear our health but sickly in his life, which in his death were perfect. I am one, my liege, whom the vile blows and buffets of the world have so incensed that I am reckless what I do despite the world. And I another, so weary with disasters, tugged with fortune, that I would set my lawyer on any chance to mend it, or be rid on it. Both of you, no Banquo was your enemy. True, my lord. So he is mine, and in such bloody distance that every minute of his being thrusts against my nearest of life. And though I could with barefaced power sweep him from my sight and bid my will avouch it, yet I must not. We shall, my lord, perform what you command us. Though our lives... Your spirits shine through you. Within this hour at most, I will advise you where to plant yourselves. To leave no rubs nor botches in the work. Fleance, his son, must embrace the fate of that dark hour. Resolve yourselves apart. I'll come to you anon. We, we are resolved, my lord. lord. I'll call upon you straight. Abide within. It is concluded. Banquo, thy soul's flight, if it finds heaven, must find it out tonight. Not had, all spent, where our desire is got without content. Tis safer to be that which we destroy than by destruction dwell in doubtful joy. How now, my lord? Why do you keep alone? Of sorriest fancies your companions making, using those thoughts which should indeed have died with them, they think on. Things without all remedy should be without regard. What's done is done. We've scotched the snake, not killed it. She'll close and be herself, whilst our poor malice remains in danger of her former tooth. Ere we will eat our meal in fear and sleep in the affliction of these terrible dreams that shake us nightly. <sighs> Duncan is in his grave. After life's fitful fever, he sleeps well. Nothing can touch him further. Come on. Gentle, my lord. Sleek o'er your rugged looks. Be bright and jovial among your guests tonight. So shall I, love, and so, I pray, be you. Let your remembrance apply to Banquel. Present him eminence, both with eye and tongue, unsafe the while that we must leave our honors in these flattering streams, and make our faces visards to our hearts, disguising what they are. You must leave this. Oh, full of scorpions is my mind, dear wife. Thou knowest that Banquo and his fleance lives. But in them nature's copies not eternal. There's comfort yet. They are assailable. There shall be done a deed of dreadful note. What's to be done? Be innocent of the knowledge, dearest Chuck, till thou applaud the deed. Come, sealing night. Scarf up the tender eye of pitiful day, and with thy bloody and invisible hand cancel and tear to pieces that great bond which keeps me pale. Thou marvelst at my words, but hold thee still. Things bad begun to make strong themselves by ill. So prithee, go with me. Who did bid thee join with us? Macbeth. He needs not our mistrust since he delivers our offices and what we have to do to the direction just. Stand with us. 
west yet glimmers some streaks of day. Now spurs the lated traveler apace to gain the timely inn, and near approaches the subject of our watch. Hark, I hear horses. Uh, give us a light there, ho. Then tis he. The rest that are within the note of expectation already are in the cart. His horses go about. Almost a mile, but he does usually, so all men do, from hence to the palace gate, make it their walk. A light! A light! Is he? Stand to it! Oh, it will be rain tonight. Let it come down! Oh, treachery! Why did this? Why? 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 Now may it be men. Who did strike out the light? It's not the way. There's but one down. The sun is fled. We've lost best half of our affair. Well, let's away and see how much he's done. You know your own degrees. Sit down. At first and last, the hearty welcome. Thanks, Thank you, Lord and Majesty. Ourself will mingle with society and play the humble host. Our hostess keeps her state, but in best time we will require her welcome. Pronounce it for me, sir, to all our friends. For my heart speak, they are welcome. See, they encounter thee with their heart's thanks. Both sides are even. Here all sit in the midst. Be large in mirth, anon. We'll drink a measure at the table round. There's blood on thy face. Tis Banquo's, then. Tis better thee without than he within. Is he dispatched? My lord, his throat is cut, that I did for him. Thou art the best of the cutthroats. Yet he's good that did the like for Fleance. If thou didst it, thou art the non-peril. Uh, my royal sir, Fleance escaped. Then comes my fit again. I had else been perfect, bound in to my saucy doubts and fears. But Banquo's safe? Oh, he my good lord. Safe in a ditch he boids. Twenty trenched gashes in his head, at least to death to nature. Thanks for that. Get thee gone. Tomorrow we'll hear ourselves again. My royal lord, you do not give the cheer. But the feast is sold that is not often vouched while tis a making. Tis given with welcome. To feed where best at home. From thence the sauce to meet is ceremony. Meeting would bear without it. Sweet remembrancer. Now, good digestion wait on appetite, and health on both. May it please your highness, sit. Here had we now our country's honor roofed. Where they graced a person of Banquo's present, who may I rather challenge for unkindness than pity for mischance? His absence, sir, lays blame upon his promise. Pleased, your highness, to grace us with your royal company. The table's full. Here's a place reserved, sir. Where? Here, my good lord. What is it that moves your highness? Which of you have done this? What, what my, good my good lord? Thou canst not say I did it. Never shake thy gory locks at me. Gentlemen, rise. His highness is not well. Fit for thee, friends. My lord is often thus and hath been from his youth. Pray you keep seek. The fit is momentary. Upon a thought he will be well again. Regard him not. Are you a man? Aye, and a bold one that dare look on that which might appall the devil. Oh, proper stuff. This is the very painting of your fear. This is the air-drawn dagger which you said led you to Duncan. Oh, these flaws and starts would well become a woman. Why do you make such faces? When all's done, you look but on a stool. Prithee, see there. That's quite unmanned and if folly. If I stand here, I saw Fight him. for shame. Blood hath been shed ere now. In the olden time, ere human statue purged the gentle wheel, I and since too, murders have been performed too terrible for the ear. The times have been that when the brains were out, the man would die, and there an end. But now they rise again with twenty mortal murders on their crowns, and push us from our stools. My worthy lord, your noble friends do lack you. I do forget. Do not muse at me, my most worthy friends. I have a strange infirmity which is nothing to those who know me. Come, love and health to all. Then I'll sit down. Give me some wine. Fill full. 
I drink to the general joy of the whole table, and to our dear friend Banquo, whom we miss. Would he were here, to all and him we thirst, and all to all. Our, our duties, duties and, and the pledge. pledge. Avaunt, and quit my sight. Let the earth hide thee. Thy bones are marrowless, thy blood is cold. Thou hast no speculation in those eyes which thou dost glare with. Think of this, good peers, but as a thing of custom. Tis no other, only it spoils the pleasure of the time. What man dare? I dare. Approach thou like the rugged Russian bear, the armed rhinoceros or the Riken tiger. Take any shape but that, and my firm nerves shall never tremble. Hence, horrible shadow, unreal mockery, hence! Why, being gone, I am a man again. Pray you, sit still. You have displaced the mirth, broke the good meeting, with most admired disorder. Can such things be? You make me strange even to the disposition that I owe, when now I think you can behold such sights and keep the natural ruby of your cheeks when mine is blanched with fear. What sights, my lord? I pray you speak not. He grows worse and worse. Question enrages him. At once, good night. Stand not upon the order of your going, but go at once. Good night, and, and better health attend his majesty. A kind good night to all. We'll have blood, they say. Blood will have blood. What is the night? Almost at odds with morning. Which is which? How sayest thou that Macduff denies his person at our great bidding? Did you send to him, sir? I hear it by the way. But I will send. There's not a one of them but in this house I keep a servant to feed. I will tomorrow to the weird sisters. More shall they speak, for now I am bent to know by the worst means. The worst. For mine own good all causes shall give way. I am in blood, stepped in so far that should I wade no more, returning were as tedious as to go o'er. Strange things I have in my head, that will to hand, which must be acted ere they may be scanned. You lack the season of all natures. Sleep. Come. Will to sleep. My strange and self-abuse is the initiate fear that wants hard use. We are yet but young indeed. Dams as you are, saucy and overbold. How did you dare to trade and traffic with Macbeth in riddles and affairs of death? And I, the mistress of your charm, the close contriver of all harm, would never fall to bear my part or show the glory of our art. And which is worse, all that you have done has been but for a wayward son. Great business must be wrought ere noon. Upon the corner of the moon, he shall spurn fate, scorn death, and bear. He hopes of wisdom, grace, and fear. Oh, I'm cold. Come, let's make haste. She'll soon be back again. My former speech has but hit your thoughts, which I can interpret further. Only I say things have been strangely born. The gracious Duncan was pitied of Macbeth, Mary, he was dead. And the right valiant Banquo walked too late. Whom you may save pleased you, Fleance killed, for Fleance fled. Men must not walk too late. <laughs> Who can want the thought of how monstrous it was for Malcolm and for Donalbane to kill their gracious father? Damned fact! How it did grieve Macbeth! Did he not straight and pious rage the two delinquents tear that were the slaves of drink and thralls of sleep? Was that not nobly done? <laughs> or it would have angered any heart alive to hear the men deny it. But peace. <laughs> For from broad words and cause he failed, his presence at the tyrant's feast, I hear Macduff lives in disgrace. Sir, can you tell where he bestows himself? The son of Duncan, from whom this tyrant holds the due of birth, lives in the English court. 
and is received of the most pious Edward with such grace that the malevolence of fortune nothing takes from his high respect. There Macduff is gone to pray the holy king upon his aid to wake Northumberland and warlike Seaworth, that by the help of these we may again give to our tables meat, sleep to our night, and receive free honors, all which we pine for now. And this report had no exasperate the king that he prepared for some attempt of war. Sent he to Macduff? He did, and with an absolute, sir, not I, the cloudy messenger turns me his back and hums, as who should say, you'll rue the time that clogs me with this answer. And that might well advise him to a caution, to hold what distance his wisdom can provide. Oh, some holy angel fly to the court of England and unfold his message ere he come, that a swift blessing we soon return this to our suffering country under him accursed. I'll send my prayers with him. The brinded cat hath mewed. Or I send once the hedge pig wind. Harp your cries. Tis time. Tis time. Round about the cauldron go. In the poisoned entrails throw. Days and nights has thirty-one sweltered venom sleeping got. Boil thou first in the charmed pot. Double, double, toil and trouble, fire, burn, and cauldron bubble. Fill it of a fenny snake, in the cauldron boil and bake. I of newt and toe of frog, wound of bat and tongue of dog. Adder's fork and blind worm sting. Lizard's leg and owlet's wing, or a charm of powerful trouble, like a hellbrun boil and bubble. Double, double, double toil and, and trouble, fire burn and cauldron bubble. Scale of dragon, tooth of wolf, witch's mummy, maw and gold, of the raven, saucy shark, root of hemlock. Dicked in the dark, liver of blaspheming Jew, gall of goat and slips of you, silvered in the moon's eclipse, nose of Turk and tartar slips, finger of earth strangled bay, ditch delivered by a drab, add there to a tiger's children for the ingredients of our cauldron. Trouble, 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 and trouble, fire burn and cauldron bubble. Cool it with a baboon's blood, then the charm is firm and good. Oh, well done! I commend your pain, and everyone shall share in the gain. And now about the cauldron sing, live elves and fairies in a ring, enchanting all that you put in. By the pricking of my thumbs, something wicked this way comes. Open locks, whoever knocks. How now, you secret black and midnight hags? What is it you do? A deed without a name. I conjure you by that which you profess. However you come to know it, answer me to what I ask you. Speak. Demand. We'll answer. Say if thou'dst rather hear it from our mouths, or from our masters. Call them. Let me see them. Pour in sow's blood that hath eaten her nine pharaoh. Grease that sweated from the murderers. Give it. Throw into the flame. Come oh, on, oh, no, thyself an office deftly show. Tell me, thou unknown power. He knows thy thought. Hear his speech, but say thou not. Beware, Macduff. Beware the thane of fight. Dismiss me. Enough. Whatever thou art, for thy good caution, thanks. Thou hast harped my fear aright. But one word more. You will not speak, commanded. Here's another. 
more potions than the first. Macbeth. Macbeth. Had I three ears, Macbeth. I'll hear thee. Be bloody, bold, and resolute. Not to scorn the power of men, for none of woman boy shall harm Macbeth. And live, Macduff. What need I fear of thee? But yet, I'll make assurance double sure, and take a bond of fate. Thou shalt not live, that I may tell pale-hearted fear it lies in sleep in spite of thunder. What is this that rises like the issue of a king, and wears upon his baby brow the round and top of sovereignty? Listen, but speak not to it! Take no care who chase, who frets, or where conspirers are. Macbeth shall never vanquish thee until Great Burnham Wood, high Dunsinane Hill, shall come against him. That will never be. Who can impress the forest, bid the trees unfix his earthbound root? Sweet bottoms, good. Rebellion's head rise never till the wood of Burnham rise? Yet my heart throbs to know one thing. Tell me, if your art can tell so much, shall Banquo's issue ever reign in this kingdom? Speak to you no more. more! I will be satisfied. Deny me this and an eternal curse fall on you. Let me know. Why sinks that cauldron? And what noise is this? Show! 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 Show his eyes and grieve his heart. Come back, shadows, so depart. Thou art too like the spirit of Banquo. Down. Thy crown does sear mine eyeballs. And thy hair, thou other gold-bound brow, is like the first. The third is like the former. Filthy hags! Why do you show me this? A fourth? Start eyes! What, will the line stretch out to the crack of doom? Another yet? Horrible sight. Now I see tis true. For the blood-boltered Banquo smiles upon me. And points at them for his. What? Is this so? I sir. All this is so. But why stands Macbeth thus amazedly? Come, sisters, cheer we up his sprites, that this great king may kindly say our duties did he welcome pay. <laughs> Let this pernicious hour stand I accursed in the calendar. Come in without there. What's your grace's will? Saw you the weird sisters? No, my lord. Came they not by you? No, indeed, my lord. Infected by the air whereon they ride, and damned all those that trust them. I did hear the galloping of horse. Who was it came by? Tis two or three, my lord, that bring you word Macduff is fled to England. Fled to England. Ay, my good lord. Time. Thou anticipatest my dread exploits. To crown my thoughts with acts. Be it thought and done. The castle of Macduff I will surprise. Seize upon Fife. Give to the edge of the sword his wife, his babes, and all unfortunate souls that trace him in his line. No boasting like a fool. This deed I'll do before this purpose cool. But no more sights. Where are these gentlemen? Come, bring me where they are. And that concludes Chapter 2. Be sure to tune in next Sunday at 6 p.m. for the third and final installment of Macbeth. This radio presentation has been a socially distanced production.
participants recorded remotely and mixed at MMP headquarters here in Toronto. Be sure to tune in to the MMP Podcast channel for new episodes. MMP Podcasts can be found on iTunes, Anchor, Spotify, and YouTube. Please subscribe to show your support and make more original programming possible. Thanks for listening. Stay safe, stay tuned, and good night.